civilization comes to an end, we were way ahead of you. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Sammy Davis Jr. Fun with Sonics with Dr. Richard Brand and Whistler Francisco Hernandez. Also, a look at people who won't be on the show and rush with stupidity. And now, a man who sweats while he works and whistles while he snores, David Letterman! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and uh, welcome back. Or no, welcome back to us. We just got back from vacation. Welcome to the show, and today is uh, Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, right? Interesting, uh, last night in Times Square here in New York City, a bunch of Jewish people got together, and right at midnight, they dropped Louis Farrakhan from the Allied Chemical Building. <laughs> Let's, let's do some early Bruce. Let's do a uh, 10th Avenue freeze out. Here we go. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Thank you. But you know, um, boy, it's exciting, huh? Early Bruce. Bruce early Bruce, yeah. yeah. How about Rosalita? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Um... You know, so you know what it is, why everybody's so <laughs> why everybody's so darned excited. It's the beginning of the brand new fall TV season. Yeah! yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do the theme from the Facts of Life. Here we go. One, two, and um, the theme from the nightly news. One, two, three. <laughs> But you know, now is that Death of a Salesman? Is that going to be a weekly series? Yes. Certainly. <laughs> what a depressing show, but I guess the title is kind of a tip off, though, isn't it? Um, so now, anyway, here's what they've done these, these guys have found the Titanic. They've located it, and you also the uh, the photographs taken from uh, beneath the uh, surface of the Atlantic. But they're not telling exactly where the wreckage is located and it turns out today why they're afraid that NBC will make more episodes of Ocean Quest and they uh, <clears throat> um, yeah it was grim no it wasn't it was a good show was it no good <laughs> our, uh, our bass player Will Lee tells us that the diving industry couldn't be more proud of that show Ocean Quest be happier, I'd say. Uh... So uh, anyway, ABC uh, ABC has changed their new uh, slogan to uh, this is pretty catchy, I believe. Alphabetically, we're number one. So <laughs> oh boy, we got a we got a great show for you tonight. Now, where am I going? Right up, oh yeah, we're going up here to talk with our uh, lovely studio audience, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go up here. Next. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Did, did, did you folks see Miss America? Or, or, uh, I, I said, did you guys see Miss America? And somebody over there screams, yeah, she was in the elevator with me. Is that true, sir? Are you making that up? Is it an attractive woman? You congratulated her. And, and how did she respond to that? Uh huh. <laughs> And then, of course, notified security, right? Uh, did you see it, Paul? I missed it. Who is this guy, Doug Swander? Can't help you there. Did any, do you, you know what I'm talking about, Doug Swander? He's saying the heat is on with the Miss America dancers? Let's do the heat is on, Paul. Here we go. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Keep, ladies and gentlemen, just let me say this to you briefly. Keep your eyes on Doug Swander. <laughs> 
are we doing up here? Oh, uh, brush with stupidity. Audience members tell us about silly things they've had happen to them in their lifetimes. And tonight, they're going to be embellished by the fine work of our staff of writers. So tonight, along with writing written embellishments of their stories, brush with stupidity. Where were you going in the elevator with Miss America? <laughs> Coming to see me? Where was you going? <laughs> hey, now, he said that Miss America was going to be on the 5 o'clock news, right? Yeah, live at five. Give you the kind of idea of the kind of clock we have here. Um, now, you guys probably frightened her off, didn't you? Yeah. Why don't you go down and get her? Now, she's going to be here Wednesday. Yeah, can you be here Wednesday? You? Oh, please do try. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, we'll send a car for you guys. Seriously. Uh, is there a Danny Schiavo? Danny Schiavo. Is there a Mr. Danny Schiavo? Danny, nice to see you. Am I am I uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Good enough. What? How do you pronounce it? Schiavo. Schiavo. And uh, where are you from, Danny? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. What do you do for a living in Brooklyn? Roofer. A roofer in Brooklyn, or you work in the city? I work on. Uh huh. And uh, you have something now that happened to you that's. A little embarrassing, a brush with stupidity. Yes. All right, let's, let's hear it, Danny. When I was about uh, 14, 15 years old, I went up to a huge biker. I asked him the time, and uh, he looked at his watch, told me that it was 10 after 5, and then I looked at mine and told him he was, his watch was off by two minutes. Mm -hmm. And he proceeded to chase me for about three blocks mm -hmm. on foot. Hmm. That's interesting. I wasn't aware that bikers wore watches. Well, no. Bikers tend to be very punctual people, I guess. Yeah. It, 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 in fact, it was a Rolex. It was a Rolex, was huh? A Rolex. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, now, Danny, that's not the entire story, is it? As a matter of fact, Dave, it's not. Okay. Comes the embellishment. When he partner. caught up with me, he said, that was the bravest thing I've ever seen. He took me back to a foul-smelling bar where after an agonizing blood ritual, I was made king of the bikers. <laughs> All right, man. Congratulations! Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. A Today Show t-shirt. Nice meeting you, Danny. Nice job. Thank you very much. <laughs> you were made king of the bikers? Unbelievable. I bet your family was proud, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a Matt Blimline? Matt Blimline, come down and pick up your turkey. Hi, Matt. How are you? Oh, okay. Matt, we talked to you uh, during the warm-up, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we had lots of fun. Blimline, is that your correct name? That's correct. That's an unusual name. Do you know anybody else named Blimline? Oh, yeah. My dad's from a family of 13. 13 Blimlines? <laughs> yeah, plus a bunch of little ones running around. Well, what is the legal limit for a Blimline in this city? <laughs> They haven't uh, gave it out yet, because uh -huh. they're still popular. That is an unusual name, though, isn't it? No, it's Pennsylvania Dutch. Pennsylvania Dutch? That's if you're from Pennsylvania. I've never... No, I'm not from Pennsylvania. Well, I can tell that. <laughs> uh, all right, Matt, tell me about your brush with uh, stupidity. Or was this it here tonight? <laughs> Sorry, no, never. Okay, Matt, I'm sorry. Please My first one me. was taking an NBC tour. Yeah, oh boy, now that is... <laughs> no, he's exactly... How many of you took the tour? And it stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> what did they take you? How much you pay? Four seventy-five. dollars All right, five bucks you tip, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's here tonight. Too. And, and what, did you, what did you get to see? Nothing. Yeah, a bunch of windows and uh, videotape programs. Oh, yeah, it's horrible, it's horrible. No, not a good deal. All right. Um, okay, tell us about your brush with stupidity, man. Well, I enjoy hand gliding, so instead of buying my own hand glider because they're so expensive, I decided to make my own. So I constructed my own and it seemed to be a little too heavy because on my first flight, it seemed to go into a tree and I landed and it split all up and everything. So yeah. that was the end of my flying career for mm -hmm. hand gliding, mm -hmm. at least trying to build my own. Yeah. But that's not the entire story, is it, Matt? Isn't there something you're not telling us? Well, Dave, yes, there's something that I haven't been telling you. So, since I was frustrated with my attempt at flying, I turned my evil genius in the opposite direction. I invented a machine that dwelled into the center of the Earth. There, I was enslaved by the molten... coated <laughs> lava people. The what? The, the molten... The molten coated lava people. The molten coated lava, lava people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Finish it out. They were a warlike tribe bent on the fiery destruction of surface dwellers, just like you, Dave. <laughs> it's fiery. Fiery destruction. 
Thank you. Congratulations, you're lucky to be alive. What do we have for him, Bill? A Today Show t-shirt. Nice meeting you, Matt. Thanks again. Um, Blimline. I still think that's a really interesting name. Very uh, sort of lyrical. Blimline. Blimline. Smooth flowing. Yeah, smooth flowing. Easy to say and easy to remember. Let's do a little Blimline, Paul. One, two, one, two, three, four. Thank you. Um, is there a Barb Stone here with us this evening? Barb Stone. Hi, Barb. How are you? Nice to see you. You're not from New York City, are you? No. You're from the Midwest, aren't you? Well, I live here now, but I'm originally from, from Wisconsin. Oh, I'm sorry. You look like somebody from the Midwest. Nope. Nice to meet you. What do you do for a living, Barb? I'm in sales. What do you sell? Dishes. China. Uh-huh. Where do you sell dishes in China? In New Jersey. Uh-huh. Pennsylvania. And this is for, like, uh, homeowners would buy dishes and so forth, or restaurants? Department stores. Department stores. Yeah. So you're a wholesaler? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell us about your interesting episode in your young life. How old um, are you? 30. 30? You look much younger. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this happened a few years ago, and I graduated from college, and I was starting my first job in New Where'd York. Where'd you go to college? Dartmouth, in Dartmouth. New Hampshire. Uh -huh. um, it's lovely up there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Hanover? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was starting my job with Macy's, and my parents were really not too keen about me coming to New York, but I told them it would be all right. Mm -hmm. So I got off the train in Penn Station. I had two huge suitcases full of all my brand new clothes for my job and i got up the station and right away this kind of scraggly looking guy came up to me and i wait a minute well, just a second was it this guy over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you <laughs> okay i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry and um he said would you like some help with your bag so i thought um, say, Mom, you didn't have to worry. They're, They're all so friendly. Nice yeah, yeah. So he picked up the two bags and boom, took off. And it didn't even occur to me what he was doing. I thought, I don't know how he knows where my hotel is already. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going after him. And um, he was just gone. But the worst part was I couldn't tell my parents. And I didn't know anyone here. And I had no money. So I had to wear the same dress my first two weeks oh. on the job. Oh. And I was, couldn't tell anyone. That's a real sad best. initiation to this city, isn't yeah. it? But. Barb, that's not the that's not the complete story, is it? Uh, no. The, the bomb didn't know that the suitcase suitcases were loaded with radioactive plutonium breeder pellets that I use in my work. Later, the police found a smoldering remains fused to the main support column of the Triborough Bridge. Yeah! Yeah! Thanks, Barb. Nice to see you. There's your Today Show DJ. Okay. We, uh, we have a wonderful program. We'll be right back after you take a look at this. Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show. We have a wonderful telecast for you tonight. Dr. Richard Brandt is here, and a man who is a whistler, Francisco Hernandez, will be joining us. And also, my first guest tonight, who is, uh, I'll tell you in a second. Did you have a good vacation, Paul? Very, very nice, nice vacation. Time? Yeah. Anything we exciting? Up, of course. Yeah, we coast. spent a little of it together. It was nice to see Did you out there. beaching. Yeah, a lot of fun. You insisted on going nude on the beach, which I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like tan lines, I guess. No, no. Uh, Hal, did you have a nice vacation? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Our director, ladies and gentlemen, Hal Gertney. Barbara? Yeah. You have a good vacation? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're back and we're ready to go. And uh, uh, this uh, gentleman, it's very exciting for us to have him here. He has been in show business for 55 years. This is the first time he has been on our program. It's truly a pleasure to have him here. Please welcome Sammy Davis, Jr. Yeah. <laughs> make you feel you must get this wherever you go this kind of response don't you it's it makes me feel very very good yeah. it really does i can't lie can, about it. can you go anywhere um uh, like shopping to the uh any place without being mobbed can you go to uh 
you say you want to go to the zoo with your kids or you want to go any place or you want to are you just <laughs> well nobody mobs me david uh, it's like people just say hey sam how are you you know yeah. and the, you know the brothers go hey bro what's happening you know <laughs> and there's always somebody that'll say invariably uh hey how's frankie you know oh, that's about <laughs> but, then, but there's never the other kind of thing with tearing and all of that yeah. no i never i never have had people that. are very very nice then. very yeah. nice and it's like i'm family yeah. so i like that 55 years in show business i hate to correct you all right but uh it's 57 years oh, gosh <laughs> Now, um, the, uh, you, what was your first job, and how old were you? You must have been what? You were like three years three. old. I was three. Three I won years my, old. My first, uh, I won an amateur contest at the Stanley Theater in Philadelphia when I was three and a half years old, singing "I'll Be Glad When You're Dead, You Rascal, You." <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you, you're uh, obviously your folks entered you in the contest, right? Yes, my dad and, and Will Masson, my uncle. Uh -huh. I affectionately called him my uncle. He was my godfather, really. Uh, they were on the bill, and they had an amateur contest, mm -hmm. and they brought me on. And in those days in vaudeville, David, they used to. They used to have an after piece. After the act, they'd do a little encore. And if there was a younger member of the family, they would bring the younger member in and he would do some sort of obnoxious number or something, <laughs> you know. And there was only a few of us and Mickey did it, Mickey Rooney did it, Donald O'Connor did it, and I did, mm -hmm. you know. And we're still around, yeah. thank you, good luck. Now, were there other three-year-olds competing in this uh, uh, talent show? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I was the only, You're the only one. <laughs> uh, I, I don't believe this. No, there were no, no, there were it wasn't Meglin's kiddies. You know. <laughs> it was it was a regular adult amateur show, and I walked out and sang I'll be yeah. glad when you did you and right. stole the show. Stole the show and won ten dollars. Yeah. Uh, what, what, you know, people are always talking about vaudeville. What does the word itself mean? We we know what it meant generically. It was a a circuit of, of uh, theaters for live performances, and they would do five or six shows a day, and so on and so forth. No, you did you did three shows a day. Mm -hmm. It went from two shows to three shows, and it wasn't until the presentation with big bands that they started doing four and five shows a day, okay. like at the Strand Theater here, or the Low State in New York, or the Roxy. We did for or the Paramount. We did four and five shows a day. I had the good fortune of working all of those theaters. Right as an opening act with my dad and, and my uncle before it started to happen for me. But do you know what the, what the term meant? Where it was Vaudeville the... meant variety, a variety show where you would, there would be the juggler, the comedian, the, uh, the two man act, the hand balancing team, the next to closing was the top spot. Yeah. And if you were next to closing act, you were the top of the bill. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, what would that do to the poor a person, a man or woman, or a juggler or whatever who had to close the show? That would have been a tough, a tough spot. Well, right? usually the closing spot was left for a big, big variety, a, a review type of thing. Oh, Twelve people, and they'd come up Kick and sing and, and dance, and, yeah. and nobody cared, you know. <laughs> and that was the end of that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, now, where were we? Oh, now, but then you started working regularly after your debut in the amateur hour, right? Yes. And, and your, your parents, your family, is this true that they uh, said you were a midget so you could get by yes. uh, uh, labor laws? I'm going to say a line now that's going to probably cause a great deal of laughter and some consternation. I appeared in blackface. <laughs> that means burnt cork right with the thing and they i had a little chocolate cigar mm -hmm. and they would dress me in in their long pants and i was about the same size i am now so <laughs> <laughs> so actually i got away with it and they said i was a 44 year old midget <laughs> so when i tell people now some of the people from the old days i say they say how old are you going to be sam i go in december i'll be 60 and they go come on you know because they don't believe it because yeah. they remember yeah. a midget yeah, yeah. That's an unbelievable life, isn't it? It is an unbelievable life, and it's the best it's ever been right now, David. Well, congratulations to you. No, Thank you. Now, in, in the early days, did you go to school and stuff? With, with no, I never went. I never had any formal education. None. No. Well, I'm not would, proud of that statement, but I survived. Yeah. But you must have had an education of some kind. I mean, yes, people, street education. Uh, give, you, give you books and help you read and, and introduce you to different subjects and so on and so forth? No. None of that. Uh, there was a guy that played piano with the act. He had wanted to be a teacher, and he taught me a little bit. I didn't learn how to 
right until I went into the army at the age of 18. So, and I, and I was a spotty reader, but I forced myself. Something happens to you when you are, when you don't take it for granted. Yeah. And it's not just laid on you, man. I, I learned everything I had to learn so that I, I wanted to just fill my head with knowledge about, so that subsequently, thank, the, thank God I can go now and have dinner with someone and I don't have to talk just show business. You know? yeah. But uh, that was the, that's the way it was. I never missed it. But you know, it's because you didn't have an education that you uh, weren't able to make anything out of yourself. <laughs> We'll do a commercial and then we'll be back with Sammy Davis Jr. What do you think of the boys? Are they all right? I can't get over that. I really can't. It's just wonderful. We have uh, we have a few seconds of a, a motion picture that you were in as a, a child. I don't, I don't know how old you were in this, and I'm not sure of the uh, the kind of film it was. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I, I think it's Rufus Jones for president, and I was five and a half. Five and a half. All right. Let's. Uh, is there anything? Well, you don't know what we're going to look at. I don't no, know either. Let's. Well, let's see what the uh, the film we have from the motion picture Rufus Jones for president. Wait, with where have you been over there? Mr. Big Shot there. Oh my goodness. Now, I've you, seen that before, but it's been some time since. No, when you it. when you look at it from time to time, mm -hmm. or the first time you look at it, what can you you understand who that person was there? No, I have no idea. Yeah. No, I really don't. It's uh, I relate to it only in the fact that I remember somewhere along the line that I danced. Mm -hmm. I remember somewhere along the line that I sang. I can't see. I never took lessons for anything. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those people, and thanks to the business at that time, that you just suddenly have people, you say to someone, I remember saying to Buddy Rich, playing with Tommy Dorsey's orchestra, right? And this was in 1940. I said, how do you do that? And he went, what do you mean? I said, you do a thing that goes. And he went, well, that's a. Uh, well, I'll show you. You go like this. And I said, he said, try it. And I went, but don't bump, chicka bum, 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 boom. He said, give me back the sticks. <laughs> so was everything was, was on the job training. You had, yes. you, had you uh, experts all around you to help you out. Yes. Now, are, are you surprised when you look at that at how good you were, what a slick little performer you were at five years old? I mean, at five years old, you know, most kids are sitting in mud, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But it's true, you know. I mean, there. You are you are a delight. Oh sure, yeah. I know. No, no, no. <laughs> no I mean, but that. when you look at the little kid there, doesn't that just take your breath away? No, it doesn't. What it what it looks, what it reminds me of. To be absolutely honest with you, David, it reminds me that I must have been a hell on wheels. I must have been terribly obnoxious, you know, to to have ever gone that far, to be that precocious, to get up there yeah. at that age and go, look, I'm going to show you how good I am, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And uh, nowadays, you get up on the stage and you perform, but uh, I think it's I think it's nice, yeah. and it's nice for me because as a grandfather now, my my oldest boy Mark just and his wife just presented. We have a we have a, a little grandbaby and yeah. uh, four weeks old, and 
it's nice to look back and one day he'll be able to look at that yeah. and say, that's my grandpa yeah. when he was my age or even younger, you yeah. know. It's, I tell you, I've had not having seen that before, it's stunning to see uh, what a cute little kid you were. And, uh, and what happened to me afterwards. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, what happened to you? Uh, what are you doing for fun these days? You mentioned you just finished uh, working and you're going home. What do you do for fun? You go home now, you're off for four weeks, you said? Yeah, I'm off for four weeks. I play a little golf, yeah. relax with my family enjoy my grandson and my wife and uh, see the house. It's a good, uh, it's a good time for me. And thanks to, uh, to audiences around the world. It's a good, I'm not fighting those devils anymore. You know, I don't fight the, uh, gee, I wonder if I just go out and do my show and it's a good time. And you're talking about devils. You just mean the anxieties you can generate? Yeah, your personal, personal yeah. devils. I, I wonder how good I can be and who's that? And you get envious of that person and who's that. I look at all the young performers today and I go like this. Yeah, man, go ahead, cook. I've been there. I didn't, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, and I have no envy. I just go like this. I did it all. <laughs> Nice to see you, Sammy. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. We'll pause here, station identification, and then we'll be right back. All right. If mistakes make you boiling mad, try the liquid paper line of correction fluids. Our solutions for handwritten mistakes, photocopies, even colored stationery can get you out of, well, almost any jam. It's so smooth it won't even scratch this delicate surface. The PaperMate AccuPoint Roller Pen with a stainless steel point and metal rolling ball for remarkably smooth fine point writing. The PaperMate AccuPoint. One call from you sets Domino's Pizza in motion. One call does it all that fast. From that moment on, we do everything to make sure your hot, delicious, custom-made pizza is delivered to your door. One call in less than 30 minutes. Does it all. Domino's Pizza delivers. Great taste, right where you want it to be. Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. Introducing the frying oil that's going to get people talking. New all-natural Wesson. Just read the label. New Wesson's 100% natural. That sure sounds good to me. Ever read Crisco's label? They put additives in there all, but not new all-natural Wesson. With Wesson, I don't get additives. I don't get anything but great-tasting fried food. For me and for them. 100% natural, no additives. It's time to change your oil to new all-natural Wesson. We're the what makes you think you are so hot? I'd like to think, think it's why thank you, Mandy. Marlboro Crips with Prissy Pan. That's my Mandy. Stretches my lips, how blues I could. The boost of things God's made me sing. Love you, Mandy. These pretty jeans are all in blue. Ooh, Mandy. Putting my separates all together. The hottest looks, the hottest styles, the hottest colors at Mandy. We got the Tuesday, the inside story Hollywood's buzzing about. Bob Hope buying NBC? Are you kidding? That kid will try anything. I don't think he has a prick. No comment. With a little help from friends like Danny Thomas, Milton Burrow, Linda Carter, and Lucille Ball, Bob buys an all-new special. There's hope for NBC right after the 18th. I'd be there if I were you. Tuesday. Ever wonder what married people do behind closed doors? Hey, you want to go upstairs? Huh? Mm -hmm. Talk about trivial pursuits. <laughs> Tell me something. Yeah. Why does your mother always call when you're in bed? Well, why do you always answer the phone? Yeah, seriously, laughing. For an intimate look at married life in America. All right, gentlemen, here it is, your big 25-point bonus question for 25 points. Gentlemen, right now, who has more boo-boos on their body? Watch the all-new Newlywed Game, weeknights at 7.30 on Channel 4. Tomorrow's Live at 5, McDonald Carey from Days of Our Lives.
Uh, coming up in the next half hour, Dr. Richard Brandt will be here. And tonight, uh, this man's a professor of physics at NYU. Is that right? Physics? Huh? Home ec? What? <laughs> physics. We think it's physics. And tonight, the topic is fun with phonics. So that'll be uh, coming up in the next, I'm sorry, sonics. Fun with sonics. Also on the program tonight, uh, Whistler Francisco Hernandez will be joining us. And tomorrow on the program from the Columbus Zoo, uh, Jack Hanna, very nice man. And he'll be here with the interesting, unusual, and very uh, nice, sweet animals. That's tomorrow night. And also comedian Richard Lewis. Doug Schwander, Paul, Schwander, the man who uh, was on the uh, Miss America pageant and sang The Heat Is On with the Miss America dancers. Yeah. Who is it? Um, this man was a Star Search finalist. Is that who he was? That's right. You know, could I just say we are very honored to have hanging out with us over in the sound area, Miss Angela Tower, Miss Alabama from the from the pageant. Just just hanging with us over here. Is that right? So yeah. How are you? Uh, nice, nice to have you here, Angela. And uh, uh, did you get to meet Doug Schwander? Nice enough guy. How about those Miss America dancers? You think you were one of the dancers? No, I'm an intern. Oh, I'm sorry, you were fourth runner-up. Pretty darn good. Congratulations. But let me ask you something in all seriousness. Do you think the Miss America dancers will ever work again? <laughs> it's a joke. Relax. It's a joke. Come here, come on over here. Just sit right here. Let's. How do you do? Right, now, why are you over there with the uh, technicians and so forth? Well, Miss Alabama gets a trip to New York after the Miss America pageant. And this was it? To what? hang around with studio technicians? It was what I wanted to do more than anything, yeah. These, these guys chipped in and brought you up here, didn't they? They did. They were very nice. Well, because, now, you're going right back to Alabama? Yes, after okay. my trip. Well, well I, I want on, you to sit Friday. right here and help with this uh, high-spirited piece of comedy we're about to do. Okay. Do we have enough time to do it now? Uh, your name again is? Angela Tower. Angela, now, this is a little something we call people who are not on the show. I show these uh, silly pictures, and then I read the goofy little captions, it, uh, and the audience starts to clutch their sides because they're laughing right, so hard. So hard. <laughs> uh, and, Paul, do we have music for this? What was, what was your talent? Are you the one who danced in the broken glass? <laughs> who no, was it? that was, was Miss was Michigan. Miss Michigan. Yes, I danced ballet. What did, what did her feet look like? Did you get a look at them? They had like scars oh, and stuff on them. Of course they did. But you're a classical dancer. That's right. And you want to do what now that you're... Uh, I'd like to teach dance. Like to teach Maybe dance. Collegiate right. level. Well, you're a lovely young lady. Oh, thank you. And I'd love to go on talking with you, but now it's time to play our game. <laughs> Uh, United States astronaut Wendell Frayne, seen here after this most recent space shuttle flight, wanted to come on to refute rumors that his mission was troubled by an ether leak. It's fun, isn't it? It is fun. What, what part of Alabama are you from? Birmingham. Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Big industrial city. Oh, yes. They, they make a lot of steel down there, don't they? They used to. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's bad more, everywhere. It's more of a college town now. Yeah. Uh, Pete Rose wanted to be on the show to break yet another of Ty Cobb's records. I can eat nine live mice, Dave. <laughs> Ty could never manage more than six. The trick is to wrap them in a towel first. That way you hardly taste them. We told Pete that we'd get back to him. <laughs> How are we doing? Only one minute? But we have Miss Alabama here. You're making trouble, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, Britain's Prince Charles wanted to be on the show and discuss his marriage to Lady Di. Marriage agrees with me, said Charles. Diana makes a terrific tuna casserole. <laughs> right. have, you, have you ever done any comedy? Uh, this is my first. Me too. Uh, uh, all right, well, I'm going to let you do this one. Okay. Angela. Hold it right up there. Okay. Al Miller says he has an amazing power. I'm completely invisible to Pearl Bailey, he told us. <laughs> I like to walk up and Go ahead. and goose her when she's on the phone. We have ma many, many more to choose from. Let me do, 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 can I do two more? Let me just do two more. 
Yeah, I'll do this one. I mean, I better not do that. One. <laughs> no, no, we'll get one. Okay, no, I got it. This will be right. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have a family? Yes, I do. You have a family? Oh, but you're not, you're not married, are you? No, I'm not married. No. You have a boyfriend, fiance? No, I'm not right now. Uh, inventor William Garrity wanted to promote what he calls the medical breakthrough of the 80s, an artificial heart for under $29. <laughs> this isn't for fussy people who want to be able to button their shirts, but if you like a value, <laughs> this one's for you. All right. That was funny. You like that one? Mm, that was good. What are your hobbies? I like to go to movies. Yeah? Watch David Letterman. You've never seen this show, have I you? have, too. All right. <laughs> Now, did the studio technicians promise you anything? <laughs> Look at those guys. Yeah. Um, and here's our, here's our final little uh, bit of comedy. This has been fun, hasn't it? This has it? been fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry Raymond wanted to be on the show and promote his book about his years as chauffeur to popular NBC TV personality Nell Carter. We said no. <laughs> Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? I'd like uh, a Big Mac value pack. Make it two, please. Hey, what's that? It's a new value pack. See? You get a large Coke, a Big Mac, and a supersized fry with 30% more. All for just $2.59. That's a great deal. Yeah, easy to handle. And did you know this great offer for Big Mac value pack is for a limited time only? I didn't know that. I know. That's why I'm dirt so in your sock. <laughs> Every morning, Adrian Gonzalez walks through the oldest executive mansion in the Western Hemisphere past cannons that kept Puerto Rico a Spanish jewel for centuries, over marble from Queen Isabel, past the room where President Kennedy once slept. Today, this mansion stands as a symbol of peace and progress. And today, Adrian Gonzalez takes pride in raising the flag of Puerto Rico, the shining star of the Caribbean. Where do you want to be? You and And keep on driving till you never stop. It's a PC takes you where you want to be. It's a PC takes you where you want to be. It's a PC. 1986 Mitsubishi cars and trucks at your dealers now. We've been telling you that we're a fast-moving bank. You told us you want proof. All right. How's this for fast? Many of our business customers can simply push a button and get an up-to-the-minute printout of their financial position, such as cash balances, transfers, and deposits that have cleared any time they need it. Terrific. United Jersey, the fast-moving bank. Now are you beginning to believe us? Yes, sir. Thank you, Paul. Sounds great. Uh, my next guest is the hardest working man in physics. Here with a segment we a segment we like to call Fun with Sonics from New York University. Please say hello to Dr. Richard Brandt. Dr. Brandt, nice to see you here again. How are you? Did you have a good summer? Fantastic. All right. Fantastic. You're, you're a professor of physics at NYU? Yeah, that's what I am. Okay. Right. Uh, sonics, what does that mean? Sonics. One well, word there. sound means a sensation in the ear or sometimes the thing that causes that sensation, like uh -huh. a wave. Yeah. So we'll be looking at waves and uh -huh. sound. And is there energy generated by sound? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Energy and momentum and uh, a lot of different frequencies. We'll look at all of that. And are we going to cover the Doppler effect here tonight? No, no, we're not going to do the Doppler effect, unless you want to. Well, could you explain us the, what the Doppler yeah, effect sure, is? Yeah, sure, sure. That's the shift in frequency due to the motion of an object. So if an object is coming at you, the frequency increases, and if it's going away from you, the frequency dis decreases. That's strange. Now, why wouldn't the motion be the same coming or going? Because the waves are being emitted by the source, and if it's going towards you, the source kind of squeezes together oh, the it's, waves. it's pushing yeah, the sound, and it's pulling yeah. when it's leaving you. That's right. 
Right. Okay. Was that a test? <laughs> All right, uh, let's get right to it. We have a lot of stuff here. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of stuff. action-packed demonstrations. Oh, it's going to be terrific. All right. Yeah, here's the first demonstration. This is a whistle, and we're going to use two different ones to show how the frequency of a noise depends on the length of the whistle. This has been sanitized, so you can blow it and, and <laughs> demonstrate it. Has, it. Really? it has been sanitized. Yes, really. Yeah. All right, I'll just, I'll just blow it. Yeah. Terrific. Now, that's a kind of high-frequency pitch, and here is a bigger whistle. This is from an organ, and this will sound much lower. It's also been sanitized. Yeah. Hold it way up and pretend you're a Viking or something. And... Oh, you pretend you're a Viking. Here, <laughs> yeah, you. Go ahead, pretend. You got that off a bus, didn't you? No, it's from an organ. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, very nice. <laughs> it, it's fun pretending, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, miss <laughs> I don't know what it means either. Listen, now we're going to pretend you're a samurai because another <laughs> generator. Oh, oh, we just proved there that length uh, equals pitch. In a, yes, uh, it's actually wavelength is inversely yeah. proportional to pitch, but that's, what's the difference? Here, <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you mean, what's the difference? This is what you do for a living. You're right, you're right, you're right. But I'm switching to comedy, obviously. Listen. This is my well, you better hurry up. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is another sound generator, uh -huh. a samurai sword. And in fact, the ancient samurais use the sounds that this makes to know about the ener energy and the pitch of the enemy, to know how fast they were moving. Now, now is do that it true? No. <laughs> no, no, no. My sword teacher can tell how each student is doing from his office just by hearing the swishes each sword makes. And, and Let you, me interrupt you right here. Yes. Your sword teacher. <laughs> I'm studying to be a ninja, actually. Really? Really. No. No, not really, no. But you have a guy teaching you how to handle a sword. Oh, sure. No, sure. What, why? I never could learn to play the piano. That's right. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it's fun, you know. I... All right, now. Shall this... we go? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate the sound, and then you're going to do it. You hear that sound? All right, just... And just from the frequency of like that, that and the loudness, you can tell everything you need to know about the opponent. So you give it a try. Now I'm being set up here to be made look like a duck, aren't I? <laughs> no, not okay. maybe a goose. Okay. <laughs> no, loud. You got to really swish it. Yeah. Well, it's going to fly out of there and, and kill no, several no. people. <laughs> no, it's a it's actually loose. Whatever your sword teacher, this is a rental, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Let's, mile. let's get on to the okay, real stuff. Here's here. the real stuff here. Actually, the ear, which senses sound, is sensitive to a wide range of frequencies. And the voice also produces sound at many different frequencies. We can illustrate that with this gas tube. Okay. You're going to speak into this loudspeaker. Right. Yeah, not yet. It's actually a microphone. It's, oh, right. Yeah. That's the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. And that's going to make sounds go in this pipe. And then I'm going to turn on the propane, and it's going to be lit and you're going to see flames and the reflection of your voice in the flames. Okay. Now you're going to just say the, all the vowels very loudly okay. and we'll see, that Actually, not yet. Not one, yet. two, three, four. The, do this. I'm sorry, uh, can I trip? Didn't anybody check you out on this stuff? It went much better at rehearsal. Before we run out of propane, speak into the speaker. The Henderson, party. party of eight. Your table is ready. Henderson. Say A. A. And I'll say E. E. See the big difference. You see, actually, most... <laughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. How much? We got to do a commercial? We have to do a commercial, and then we're, oh, we're coming back. Well, uh, we're more with uh, Dr. Brandt right after this. We'll be right back. Now, these other things. Oh, oh, 
Baby tender loving clean. Mothers say Baby Fresh cleans baby better. It's thicker and bigger, and it comes regular and unscented. For the love of Jason, for the love of Jenny, for the love of Sean, for the love of Kenny. More mothers choose Baby Fresh to get baby tender loving clean. Takes practice to frost a Pepperidge Farm layer cake. They're swirled with a spoon, then smoothed by hand. First, they're baked with rich things like genuine cocoa or luscious coconut, then frozen to stay extra fresh. You see, Pepperidge Farm still remembers simple things make better cakes. Come on in. Race you. <laughs> <laughs> The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Atro Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Atro Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. Dr. Brandt, how many how many classes do you teach at NYU? Well, one a semester. How many? How often a week? Uh, twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. Well, you must be exhausted. Oh, it's terrible. It's really terrible. Uh, okay. Sure. Now this I understand is quite spectacular. Oh, this is spectacular. No, but yeah. first, summing up, what have we learned so far? We've learned how to characterize sound by frequency and inversely as wavelength and by intensity of the sound. Really, we've learned nothing. <laughs> and we're going to continue with that. Thing. All right. Come on. <clears throat> okay, we're going to actually use sound to break glass. Oh, now, like they do on the uh, uh, Memorex tape commercial. That's right. Except, of course, it really can't be done with a human voice alone. It needs substantial amplification. Well, how do they do it on the commercial? That's it? It's being amplified? Oh, yes, to a it's great... being amplified. But yes. it actually is a human voice amplified many times breaking the glass. That's true. So that part of it's true. That part of it's okay. true. That's right. But there are stories like about Caruso breaking glass with his unamplified voice, and that mm -hmm. never happened. Never it's happened. really, really tough to do, okay. as you'll see. Now, the important thing about breaking glass is to drive it at the right frequency. Every glass has a natural frequency. You can excite it by running the bow along that glass. Well, <laughs> well no, I, I think we all knew that. This way. No. Right there? Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Now, if we put noise on that glass at that frequency, at enough intensity, it'll break. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's how we do that. We have the loudspeaker here and the signal generator here. And I'm going to actually break this beaker and put it right here in front of the speaker and put a paper on it so I can see when it vibrates. All right. And you're going to wear these because it's going to get pretty loud. First, I'm going to find the resonance frequency. How much we got? All right, we'll get about I'm a minute. I'm going to find the resonance frequency by seeing when the paper vibrates. And I'm then sorry, I couldn't hear anything you said. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Break the glass. Now... Turn it all the way up. Go. All right. Now, how are we doing? Not well. Okay, we have 30 seconds here. Well, it's not going to work, is it? Well, turn the damn thing off. We're... Turn it off. Jeez. I, now, look, I don't know. <laughs> have, you, have you ever done it with this? Thank you. It was too loud. Thank you. Unbelievable. You've done it again. Dr. Grant, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Valley's got your new attitude, Dandy Bar. I'm feeling good from my head to my shoes. Dandy Bar. Know where I'm going and I know what to do. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dandy Bar. I've got a new attitude. Dandy Bar. Know where I'm going and I know what to do. Dandy Bar. 
new dandy bar. Wholesome granola with a new attitude. Real milk chocolate, chewy granola, gooey caramel. Ooh, 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 I got a new attitude. The race fans everywhere. Old Milwaukee means something great. It means the old Milwaukee race team racing at its best. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. And Old Milwaukee. And Old Milwaukee light. Old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than this. I work around my home to relax. After years of building these giants, I know a good product when I see one. Take Miracle Adhesives. Pros have been specking Miracle for the big jobs for 40 years. It's economical, easy to use, and that makes Miracle a good choice at home. For paneling, tiles, flooring, you name it. Miracle holds good, real good. It's important for this skyscraper and for that paneling. I wouldn't want either of them to fall down. Miracle Adhesives. It's summertime, saving time, summertime, saving time. It's summertime, saving time at your Mazda dealers, and we're dealing on everything. On GLCs, 626s, even RX-7s. And during our factory-supported truck clearance sale, you can save hundreds on an 86 Mazda B2000. So come by now and save. Mazda summertime, saving time. Get a lot of value at your local Mazda dealer today. Okay, Dr. Brand and his nearly trained crew have looked over the equipment, and uh, we concluded we blew the speaker. Oh, the speaker is gone, so yes. there's no way it can be broken no. now. I'll come oh. back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, well, no, come here and uh, help me say good night. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Francisco Hernandez, the whistler. I'm sorry we ran out of time. Perhaps he could have broken that by whistling. <laughs> he couldn't have done any worse. And uh, we'll see to it that Mr. Hernandez comes to your home. No, no. We'll see to it that he is back on the show as soon as possible. Uh, also, my thanks to Dr. Richard Brandt and Sammy Davis, Jr. We'll see you tomorrow night, folks. Thank you very much. Good night. Wednesday, St. Elsewhere goes nuts in its gut-wrenching season premiere. Things around here are never going to be the same. With Dr. Westfall gone, will the place slide into chaos Wednesday? It's the season premiere of Hunter. Bring them on. Dee Dee's the bait for a porno killer. Very nice, Nicole. It's the season premiere of Hunter, Saturday. You could win a million dollars playing New York's instant games. I got a better chance of being struck by lightning. One ticket, please. What it is, what it is. Old Calais is cruising the night in the city of light. High heel shoes and faded blues. It's making the cut so smooth. That's what Calais is. What it is, what it is. You're scaling an edge on a razor's edge. A new four door and five on the floor. Flashing eyes and crimson skies. That's what old Calais is. What it is, what it is. From a good old, good old guy. Making the moves, Jack Moran moves. Moran.